Hi, so today we're going to study about transversals, but these transversals will be passing through non-parallel lines. Okay, now, if you look at the drawing here, you would see that um, there's a construction, right? There are wood here, there's like um, frames of wood. Check out this diagonal wood, all right? It is a line that passes through several lines, okay? That's the key thing in our lesson on transversals because a transversal is a line that crosses at least two other lines so it could be two or more lines check out the lines in blue this one the lines in blue this one and this one okay this one and that one okay the lines in blue these are three lines in blue but check out the line in red the line in red is called the transversal. Trans, it passes through, right? Okay, so here on the first um, example, it passes through two points here. On the second example, the red line passes through two points as well. On the third example, it passes through three points. So as long as it passes through two or more, it's called the transversal. Now, our focus here are the angles formed by a transversal passing through non-parallel lines. So, this will be our model all the time. This is line 1. This is line 2. Those are the lines which are not parallel. How did I prove that they are not parallel? Because if you extend the line, they will meet at a certain point. So, definitely, it's not parallel. And the red line is always, this red line is always our transversals. Now, Look at these angles and remember the names of the angles and how to identify them. Okay, so the first thing we have to learn are the angles formed. So remember our line 1 and line 2, the one in blue, and the red one is the transversals. Okay, so there is an angle 1. Okay, this has a certain degree. That doesn't mean it's 1 degree. No, you measure it, it's probably greater than 45 degrees. Then angle 2, this is another angle. Angle 3 is another angle. Angle 4 has another angle. And they are um, measured in degrees. On the other side, go below. We also have angle 5, angle 6, angle 7, and angle 8. All right? So 7 and 8. So let's look at this. There are 8 angles formed, and we name them using this symbol. Take note of this symbol. It looks like the letter L. It looks like less than symbol, but it's written this way. That means angle. Angle 1, angle 2, and so on and so forth. Next are adjacent angles. Think of adjacent like this. If this is your apartment, beside your apartment is another apartment, right? And sometimes you're sharing a common wall. So you share something, and it's similar to that. Adjacent angles are beside each other. Take note, they are beside each other and they share a common side. Now, if you look at angle 1, who's beside angle 1? Angle 2. They are beside each other and they're sharing this common side. This common side, right? This common side. There you go, that common side. Now, you can also say that angle, let me use another pen, his one. Angle 2 and angle 3 are adjacent. Okay, another one. There's another pair. Let's go around those uh, angles. Let's get another pair. How about angle 3 and angle 4? They're beside each other. They're sharing this side. Okay, what else? How about angle, yes, angle 4 and angle 1? They're sharing that side. On the other side, there are also adjacent angles. Can you name them? All right, so these are the final adjacent angles. Check. Are we, do you agree? Okay. The next definition are supplementary angles. Take note with supplementary, what do we mean? They are usually the adjacent angles. Okay, if they're beside each other, they are also supplementary. And what did we know about supplementary? They add up to 180 degrees. Check this out. Okay, so the, the, the first two adjacent angles obviously is angle 1 and angle 2. What do you mean by that? 
if you add the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, it is a straight line, right? Can you see that straight line? This one, I can't draw it correctly though. That straight line is 180 degrees. Okay, so is there another pair that will add up to 180? Yes, there is. What is it? Angle 2 and angle 3. Okay, look at this green line. There you go. Okay, if I add angle 2 plus angle 3, the total will be what? 180 degrees. All right, so that's just two pairs. There are more pairs aside from that. You could have angle 3 and angle 4. They add up to 180, supplementary. What else? I could also have angle 4 and angle 1. They add up to 180 degrees. So below, you will also see pairs that will add up to 180. So these are our final list. Okay, check. Do you agree? Okay, good job. Now let's move on to another type. Vertical angles. Take note of vertical angles. They are across each other. All right? One across, directly in front of the other. And they are what else? They are always congruent to each other. Remember this symbol? Congruent. Okay, so which is across angle 1? Angle 3. There you go. If this is 80 degrees, this is also 80 degrees. So take note. The angle across in front of it it has the same measure. And what else? If angle 2, the vertical angle uh, in front of angle 2 will be what? Angle 4. See, directly in front or across. So if this is 100 degrees, you are also 100 degrees. They are always the same. Take note of that. Always congruent. On the other side, what else? Angle 6 is congruent to angle 8. And angle 7 is congruent to angle 5. Okay? These two and these two. Remember those tick marks? Meaning they are congruent to each other. Final list? This is it. Do you agree? Corresponding angles goes like this. Think of a classroom, right? In the classroom, the teacher will group the students, right? There's a group 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, for each groups, um, a teacher will assign a facilitator. Facilitator for group one, for two, see, they correspond. And for each group, there's a secretary. So a secretary corresponds with another secretary for each group, okay? So same thing. If you look at these uh, transversals, there will be pairs of matching angles, okay? And they are not necessarily congruent or equal to each other. For example, on the upper left corner is angle one. On the, upper, on the other group, right, group of angles, the upper left is angle 5. So they are corresponding. Okay, next. Which angle corresponds to angle 2? So upper, upper right side. So it's angle 6. So those two are co corresponding, right? And then how about which corresponds with angle 4? Angle 8, correct? And lastly, which angle corresponds with angle 3? angle 7 all right so the final list is this agree okay good job next interior angles from the word interior in inside okay so angles inside lines 1 and 2 this is the inside let me just shade it these are the inside okay that is inside and then these are the outside okay these are the outside so just look at the inside there okay so now if we want the what interior angles we only have angle 4 angle 3 angle 6 and angle 5 there are four interior angles correct okay Alternate interior angles. Okay, take note. Our focus are the interior angles. Just the ones inside here. Okay. So, alternate interior angles should be inside. What else? They are one on each of the opposite sides of the transversal. Remember that red line, that transversal. Okay. So, I need to get angle 4. The partner is not 3. The partner is not 5. No, the partner would be 
across the other side, right? So angle 6. So they are the alternate and they are interior. What would be the partner of 3? On the other side, it's going to be 5. So do you have two pairs? Write them down. Angle 4 and 6, angle 3 and 5. All right, exterior angles. Okay, our focus now are not the interior but the exterior. This space in yellow, okay? That's exterior. That's exterior. Outside the, the, the lines, the blue lines, okay? So again, they should be outside. What else? And there are only four of them. What are they? We, I already listed them down. One is outside, two is outside, seven is outside, eight is outside. So these are the exterior angles. So again, we talk about exterior angles, but there's a condition. It has to be alternate exterior. What do we mean by that? They should be outside again. But again, it is one on each of the opposite sides of the transversal. Okay, look at the exterior, the outside. So what will be the partner of angle 1? Alright, don't choose 8, don't choose seven, 2, you will choose 7. Alright, what else? What would be the partner of angle 2? It will be angle 8. Okay, so those two, remember, they are all exterior. I don't care about the interior, I just care about the exterior. So these are our answers. Next, let's try to solve some problems, okay? So, in the diagram, which angle is alternate exterior of angle 4? Alright, first identify where angle 4 is. Angle 4, you're over there, okay? Alternate exterior, okay, so exterior. This looks like the two lines, okay? These are the two lines, and these are the exterior parts, okay? The red line seems to be the transversal. Okay. So, 4 would be partnered to what angle? Is it angle 1? Is it angle 6? Or angle 7? Remember, I need alternate exterior. Yes, the correct answer is angle 6. See that? They're both exterior and they are alternate. So, the answer is angle 6. Okay, so let's start now. What is the measure of angle 4? And what do we know? Angle 3 is 76. Okay, so angle 3, let me write it down as 76 degrees. But I want to know what angle 4 is. Okay, check out the relationship between angle 3 and angle 4. Clue, they are adjacent. They're beside each other. What else? Clue, if you add them up. Yes, correct. If you add them up, they add up to 180 degrees. What do you call that? You call it supple, correct, supplementary angles, equals 180 degrees. But you already know angle 3, which is already 76, plus angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees. So what do we do? Subtract 76 on both sides. That cancels out, therefore, angle 4 is now 104 degrees okay next what do we know about angle four angle four is also congruent to angle two do you agree yes because they're across each other what relationship did we learn if they are across each other they're always congruent and what do you call that they are vertical angles very good therefore you, we already know that their vertical angle two is equal to angle four Therefore, if angle 4 is 104, therefore, angle 2 is also 104 degrees. Okay? Understood? Okay, good job. Okay, the last problem is the most challenging one, but we can do this. What is the measure of angle 1? Okay, this is angle 1. We have no idea what the measure is. But look across it. What do you call that? The angle across. Oh, yeah, it's called the vertical. So, whatever... Angle 1 is, is the same with 5x, so they're equal to each other. But I have no idea what the angle 5x means, because x could be any number. Is there a way for me to get the value of x? Um, not from that side, but if you look on the other side, I would see that this angle, 125, plus that angle, one, uh, 4x minus 5, should be equal to what? 
They form a straight line. What do I know? 125 plus the 4x minus 5 should be equal to 180 degrees. Remember, supplementary. They form a straight line. So let's add them up. 125 minus the 5. I could do associative property, right? So 120 is plus 4x equals 180. Okay, we just want to solve for the value of x. I can now what? Minus 120 for you, minus 120 for you. Okay, that cancels out. Therefore, 4x is equal to 60. Okay, so that x will be alone. I could divide you by 4, divide you by 4. Therefore, x, x will now be equal to 15. Okay. But that is not yet the value of angle 1. Now, plug in x to 5x. Okay? So, 5x means 5 times, I already know the value of x, which is what? 15. Alright? 5 times 15 is 25. 75. There you go. 75 degrees. So, if this whole angle is 75 degrees, what can you say about angle 1? Yes, angle 1 is also equal to what, I mean, is equal also equal to 75 degrees because that is based on the 5x. Okay, are we okay? Good job.